Hello friends, welcome to the series lecture on digital system design using Verilog. In this video, let us talk about I.O. interfacing. The topics that I am going to cover is I.O. devices. In this I.O. devices, I am be talking about input device and output device and I.O. controllers. In this I.O. controllers, I will be talking about simple I.O. controllers, autonomous I.O. controllers. This parallel bus topic is important. In this parallel bus, you will be talking about multiplexed bus, tri-state bus, open drain bus and bus protocol. What do you mean by a protocol? What do you mean by bus protocol? These things are very very important. In the case of serial transmission, you are going to talk about RS-232 and you will be talking about I2C. In this serial communication, you need to talk about serial transmission technique and serial interface standards. This I.O. software topic is very very important. In this one, you need to talk about the basic difference between polling and interrupt. What are the advantages and disadvantages of using polling mechanism over interrupt mechanism or interrupt mechanism over polling mechanism timers topic is also important let us discuss io interfacing topic in detail the first topic what i am going to discuss is io devices we know that for a microcontroller or microprocessor in order to interact with the outside world it is in need of input devices as well as output devices say suppose if i am considering a laptop keyboard and mouse is an example for input device and monitor or printer is an example for output device. If I am considering an embedded system, sensor or transducer is an input device. Now what is the basic difference between a sensor and a transducer? Sensor is a one which is going to convert a physical quantity to a readable ones. But the transducer is going to convert a physical quantity to electrical signal, preferably voltage or current. Next, let us talk about input devices. We are very much familiar with respect to push button, toggle switch, keypads and keyboards. These are all our example for input devices. In the case of lifts, if you want to select a floor, at that time you are going to make use of push button. And in the case of laptop, if you want to type a document, you are going to make use of keyboards. And olden day cell phone, a keypad was attached in order to text a message or to make a call. How the microcontroller is going to judge whether what key has pressed. So it is going to repeatedly scan for row scan as well as column scan. So with the help of row scan and column scan, it will be in a position to understand which key has pressed. Mainly you will be talking about switch bouncing effect or contact bounce effect. Based on this technique, you will be judging which key has pressed. So the suitable action will be carried on based on the key pressed. Next, let us talk about encoders. Here they are focusing on wheel encoders. Say suppose we are having a robot. If you want robot to navigate from one place to another place, we are going to make use of wheel encoders. How many rotations it has made based on that value, you are going to judge what is the distance traveled by the robot from the initial position. Next, let us talk about analog inputs. We know that environmental signals are analog in nature, nothing but it is both continuous in time as well as amplitude. So this signal has to be converted to digital signal for processing point of view. So we are in need of A to D converters. And especially in the embedded system or digital system, the inputs are sensors or transducer. Few examples they are given. The first example is microphone. These microphones are used if you want to convey to a large audience. At that time, you will be making use of microphone. So microphone, what it is going to do is, it is going to convert our sound waves to electrical signals. It is going to convert sound waves to electrical signals. Based on that, the signal will be amplified and it is given to a loudspeaker so that the large audience can able to receive the information what the conveyor is going to speak. Diaphragm, what it is going to do is, it is going to convert the sound waves to electrical signals. So that is achieved with the help of diaphragm. Next, let us talk about fluid flow sensors. In a plant, what is the fluid rate that is flowing? So in order to sense it, we are going to make use of fluid flow sensor, gas detection sensor also, especially in the case of LCG, whenever there is a leakage, it is going to turn on the buzzer. So this is a use of a gas detection sensor. We are very much familiar with respect to A to D converters counter type A to D and the second one is flash type A to D and third type of A to D is successive approximation register type and the fourth one is dual slope or integrating type. So what is the use of using flash type? 
if you want conversion time to be a low value at the time we are preferring flash type the major drawback of using flash type is it is in need of 2 power n minus 1 comparators nothing but if n equals to 8 at the time you are in need of 255 comparators if n equals to 16 at the time you are in need of 65535 comparators so this is a huge value hence flash type circuit complexity is more most of the cases you are not going to make use of flash type but if you are making use of dual slope a to d or integrating type at that time precision or accuracy will be good and you can reject um effect but if you are making use of successive approximation register type speed wise it is good as well as circuit is less complex here you are going to make use of d to a converters also this is very very important and in the case of successive approximation register type if your input value is say suppose 9 volt 3 volt or 18 volt whatever may be the input value the conversion time will be a fixed term that is n times of t clock but if i am talking about conversion time in the case of flasher type it is one clock cycle nothing but few nanoseconds it is few nanoseconds but if i am talking about dual slope it is 2 power n plus 1 plus 1 times of t clock which is a huge value next let us talk about output devices so in order to indicate the value we are going to make use of output devices here they are talking about led display and lcd display especially in the case of traffic signals we are going to prefer led display because brightness will be more in the case of led displays but brightness will be less in the case of lcd display in household appliances like water purifier or water heater if you want to indicate some measurement or if you want to display some message at that time you are going to make use of lcd display you are not going to prefer led display if i am talking about television initial days the television was made up of vacuum tubes later on flat tv later on lcd display and led display now it is uhd display nothing but curved tv but if I am talking about clarity wise, LED displays are very much clear when compared to LCD display and if I am talking about cost wise also, LED displays are costlier when compared to LCD displays. As we are very much familiar with respect to LED and LCD, LED stands for light emitting diode and LCD stands for liquid crystal display. Next let us talk about 7 segment display, in my previous lecture I have explain the working part of the seven segment display how you are going to display a character or a number say suppose you want to display some information at that time you can't give signal for anode pin as well as cathode pin so what you are going to do is we are going to prefer for common anode configuration or common cathode configuration in the case of common anode configuration all the leds anode terminal are shorted and it is given to vcc supply in the case of common cathode configuration, all the cathode terminals are shortened and it is given to a least potential, say ground potential, you are going to manipulate or you are going to control anode pins only in the case of common cathode configuration. So you should be very much familiar with respect to this electromechanical actuators and valves also. So in order to open the tap or in order to close the tap, especially you are going to make use of solenoid valves. You are going to make use of solenoid valves nothing but with the help of electrical signals you are going to control the valve movement nothing but opening a tap or closing the tap thereby you can reduce the human intervention or the faults that will be made by humans if you want to move a mechanical part with the help of digital system that action is called as actuation and it is done by actuator say suppose you are having an 8051 microcontroller which will be turning on a motor so it is performing actuation and this is done by actuator circuits next let us talk about motors we are having three variants of motor the first one is stepper motor and the second one is dc motor and the third one is servo motor let us talk about application point of view the stepper motor example is wall clock nothing but there will be a fixed increment there will be a fixed increment in the case of stepper motor and the rotation speed also will be less only but if i am making use of dc motor if i want to navigate a robot from one place to another place if i have installed wheels on it so i will be preferring dc motors because 
based on the voltage that I am going to apply, it is directly proportional to the speed of the DC motor. Next, if I want to move the arm or leg of a robot at the time, I will be going for servo motor because precise movement can be controlled with the help of servo motors rather than using DC motors and stepper motor. I have discussed the three units of motor. The first one is stepper motor, the second one is DC motor and the third one is servo motor. Next, let us talk about D2A converters. So, we are very much familiar with respect to R to R ladder and weighted type D2A converter. So, the process information will be in digital in nature. We the humans, you can't understand machine language. So, D2A converters are required in order to convert a digital data to a analog data. At that time, we are going to make use of digital to analog converter. So these things you should know, the working part of R to R ladder, all those things you have already studied. So let us not go in detail. What is a sensor? We know that sensor is a one which is going to read the physical data and it is going to convert to a readable one. Example is thermometer or speedometer. What is an actuation? I have explained. Why would a digital system require a digital to analog converter? Just now I explained. How many comparators are required in a flash type A2D with a resolution of 8 bit? Number of comparators required is 2 power n minus 1 which is equals to 255 comparators. How can we reduce the number of connections required for a multi digit 7 segment LED display? At that time you will be going for common anode configuration or common cathode configuration. Main thing is you have to overcome the flickering noise. What is the difference between a solenoid and a relay? These things are very very important. Next, in the case of simple, next in the case of I/O controllers, we will be having two variants. The first one is simple I/O controller, and the second one is autonomous I/O controller. Next, let us talk about parallel bus. What do you mean by a bus? It is nothing but a set of wires that is used to transfer data or it is used to transfer the address. So that is what do you mean by bus. The case study what they are given is we have to know the architecture of AMBA bus especially in the case of 8085 microprocessor and 8086 microprocessor what you are going to do is the address bus is of 16 bit wide 8 lines is dedicated as lower bus and 8 lines of bus is dedicated as upper bus so this upper bus what you are going to do is at one point of time you are going to use to send the address Next point of time, you are going to send the data on it, nothing but you are going to perform multiplexing. So the hardware cost you are reducing, whenever you are going to send the data, at that time you will be not fetching the address or you will not be pointing to the address. So first addressing will be done, next data. So thereby you can reduce the bus complexity. This is achieved with the help of using the multiplexer. Next, let us talk about tri-state bus. In order to explain the tri-state bus, let me consider I am having a control signal, nothing but enable signal and I am having input and I will be having output. Say suppose I am designing an inverter, if enable equals to high, then if input equals to 0, output equals to 1, if enable is still high, if input equals to 1, output equals to 0. This is done when enable equals to 1. Say suppose enable equals to 0, nothing but output is not following the input. So if enable equals to 0, output is going to follow the try state, nothing but an I impedance state, nothing but it is not going to take the actions that is going to provide by an input signals. This is what I mean by try state. So whenever you are not using your laptops, at the time you are putting your laptop into your sleep mode or hibernation mode. This state is called as tri-state in the case of CMOS VLSI circuits. So in this tri-state, the power consumption will be drastically reduced. This is done in order to extend the battery life of the laptop. This topic is very very important, bus protocol. So what do you mean by protocol? Protocol is nothing but a set of rules or a set of guidelines that has to be followed before making any communication or at the time of communication. Now look at over here, if I want to convey some information to an end user, at that time I should first see to it whether this user is available or not. If the user is available and if he is ready to get my data or accept my data, then only I should transmit the data or I should interact with this person. If not, I should wait for the person's reply. 
So this is what we mean by a bus protocol. Say suppose if microcontroller or microprocessor wants to communicate with interfacing devices, nothing but a peripheral device. So at that time what microcontroller or microprocessor will do is it will send an request signal stating that whether you are ready or not in order to receive or accept the data. If the peripheral device is telling yes nothing but it will be giving an acknowledgement at that time microprocessor will send the data or it will receive the data. This is what we mean by a bus protocol. In this bus protocol you will be talking about gumnet codes and you will be talking about AMBA bus also. Next let us talk about serial transmission. In the serial transmission you are going to make use of RS232 and you are going to make use of I square C. Now what do you mean by serial transmission and what do you mean by parallel transmission. So in case of serial transmission only a dedicated wire will be there in order to send the data but in the case of parallel transmission you will be having a set of wires so that parallel communication can be done. So in the case of serial communication you are going to send bit by bit. In the case of parallel communication based on bus width you are going to send the data. If it is 4 bit wide you are going to send 4 bits at a time. If it is 8 bit wide nothing but you are going to send 8 bits at a time. If it is 32 bit bus then you are going to send 32 bits at a time. Now if I am talking about a cost in the case of serial transmission cost will be less but here cost will be more. The speed of operation if I am talking the speed will be poor in the case of serial transmission. The speed will be very much better in the case of parallel transmission. So in the case of serial interface standards you will be talking about RS232 and I square C nothing but inter integrated circuits. You will be talking about universal serial bus nowadays in each and every laptops USB is common. Now what do you mean by USB? So you will be having RS232 cable and you will be having 9 pin port also, you will be having 16 pin port also. USB is very much common. So what it is going to do is, it is going to accept the data with this port only, nothing but if you want to interface pen drive or if you want to interface mouse or if you want to interface keyboard at that time USB is common. So this is something like a standard kind of thing. And the data rate what they are given is 1.5 MBBS. 12 MBBS or even 480 MBBS also. This data speed is very very important. Please remember. And one more serial interface standard is FireWire. They may ask you write a short notes on FireWire or they may ask you write a short notes on I square C or even RS232 also. So you should be in a position to write. Last topic. Let us talk about IO software. In this IO software you need to talk about polling. You need to talk about interrupt. You need to talk about timers. So what do you mean by polling and what do you mean by interrupt? So the difference between these two things are very very important. In order to explain what do you mean by polling and in order to explain what do you mean by interrupt, let me give a simple example. So one fine morning your relative has called you and he has told you that he will be coming to your house. So there will be two kinds of wait. The first one is you will suspend all your work and you will be waiting for his or her arrival. The next mechanism will be you will be continuing with your work or you will not suspend your work whenever the doorbell rings at that time you will provide service to the person. So in the case of polling what you are going to do is a repeated checking will be there in the case of polling. But in the case of interrupt so microcontroller or microprocessor will be busy doing its work whenever a device is generating an interrupt based on its priority a service will be given to a peripheral. In the case of polling your work will be suspended but in the case of interrupt work will be continuing only. In the case of polling especially in the case of real time systems where the task is critical at that time you are going for polling concept nothing but a dedicated microcontroller or microprocessor will be reserved. In the case of general purpose systems we are going to make use of interrupt mechanism. So this chapter summary is very very important please go through it. So in this video I have discussed with IO interfacing. In the next video let us talk about design methodology. If you have followed with my lecture please give it a big thumbs up. Also share this video with your friends and don't forget to subscribe to my channel Precise Study. Thank you. All the best for your exams.